Hi there, I'm Steven and I'm going to show you the second part of animating this pendulum swing that I've set up in a previous video. So a couple things about this, I'm just going to quickly review the way I've set this up. I have uh, keyframes, uh, it's a motion tween, so I right clicked and did a motion tween. And I've got several keyframes set up that allows the pendulum to swing just back and forth. And there's a couple things about this going on. Right now, I, it's really acting like a metronome. I just have it going back and forth, and I'm going to loop this. So if you turn on loop, and make sure sometimes when you turn on loop, this is a short, shorter range, so this blue line here will give you your range where it's looping. And if I play, again, like I said, it's acting like a metronome. It's going back and forth. It doesn't have a lot of life, and it doesn't show a lot of principles of animation. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to show you how to apply a couple different principles and one is slow in and slow out. So in slow in and slow out, the idea behind that is as this gets up to its height, it's going to slow down because the weight of it is pulling it back down. You've got this inertia that's causing the pendulum to come up to this height. I mean, if it were a real pendulum. And I want to give the illusion that this is got a lot of weight to it, right? Which it really doesn't. It's just an animated, you know, pendulum. But I want it to look like it's actually got some weight and it'll give it more life and it'll make it feel real or a little bit more realistic. So how I do that is it needs to slow down as it reaches the height because you've got inertia, but then gravity is pulling it back down, right? So it's going to go slow. It needs to go slow when it reaches this height and then it's going to return and then slowly speed up until it gets towards the middle and, and that's when it's going to reach its sort of maximum velocity. And then it's going to start slowing down again when it reaches this height. If I play this, you'll notice it's not doing that yet. Again, it's like a metronome. It just goes back and forth and it doesn't have this sort of weight. It feels very weightless, right? So I want to give it a little bit of weight like a real pendulum would. So there's a couple different ways to do this. And I'm going to show you my method, which to me works the best because it works like a lot of other animation software out there. If I double click on this yellow line, this is the motion tween. If I double click on that, you're going to see the motion editor here. And in the motion editor, I'm going to see this animation curve. Well, right now it looks just like an animation zigzag, but technically the term is an animation curve, right? You have keyframes here and you'll see these little points mimic the keyframes up here. And they're really tied together. So if I move this one, you're going to see that that keyframe in the frame span is actually moving, right? So I'm going to undo to bring it back. So these points are inherently tied. So when there's a keyframe there, you're going to see a point on here. Now, this particular animation is just rotating back and forth. It doesn't have any other movement other than that. If I did, you're going to see other curves. So right now, the only curve I see is rotation, and rotation is Z. That is the label for this motion, right? So since rotation is 360 degrees, you're going to see that this starts at zero, and back here it's at probably about 60 or so, and here it's about 60. So I can even look, when I click on one of those keyframes, and I select my symbol, you're going to see in the transform panel it's 60 degrees. By the way, if this is not open, it's like docked over here sometimes. You can actually click on it and then drag that tab over. I had that talked about that in a previous video. Or you can go to Window and choose Transform to turn it on, right? And then if it's, a, if it's kind of docked over here, you can drag out that tab and bring it over here so I can see this a little bit better. So when I select this keyframe, you're going to see it's negative 60. This keyframe, it's 60. So it's going from 60 to negative 60, zero being straight up and down, as I kind of mentioned in the previous video. So this one, zero, would be somewhere around here. I don't need a keyframe for it because it's just going right through it. So I'm going to look at this. So in this value, so in this graph, this is the value. And the value in this case is rotation in degrees. So zero degrees is straight up and down because that's how I designed my pendulum. Negative or positive 60 is this direction. Negative 60 is this direction. So this is going to negative 60 and this is going to positive 60. So somewhere in the middle is zero. So this point is on the value at 60. This point is on the value at negative 60. Going left to right is time. So this is increasing in time. This is going backwards in time, right? And typically animations just go forward in time, just to kind of bring that concept up. So this is time and this is value. Really important to remember in every animation, and a lot of other software applications do the same thing. Maya, After Effects, a lot of other animation software, Toon Boom, have a similar motion editor. 
So I'm going to put the playhead right about halfway, and you're going to see it's straight up and down because the intersection of zero and the playhead on this line, on the animation curve or the straight line, is zero, right? That's where it's showing you, when I move the playhead, it's showing you where that is at in time due to the frame and value in terms of where this line is. So if I put dots on every single frame, that would be a keyframe for each frame. I don't need to do that. It's way overkill because I can let animate do everything on its own. So just to kind of talk about how this all works is these are frames, right? All these are frames. These are keyframes, the little dots. And down here are where the value is on that keyframe, right? So I can move this up and down, left and right, right? And it changes the value and time on this keyframe. The other thing I can do is I can hold down shift and drag this up and down and it's going to constrain it so I can't move it left and right. It just constrains it up and down. Likewise, if I hold down shift and I click and I drag it left to right, that's going to constrain it in time. That way I can kind of constrain it along one axis. So I'm going to undo and get that back to frame 50. All right, because I want these to be right where I left them. I'm going to change them uh, eventually, but it'll be okay right there for now. So what I want to do is I want to introduce slow in and slow out to this. So the idea is when the pendulum reaches its apex, so when it reaches its height on this side, it actually needs to start slowing down when it gets there. It needs to be its fastest in the middle and the slowest at the start. So I need slow into this point and slow out of that point. So this is considered an extreme, and I want it to slow down when it gets to that extreme and then slow back out when it comes back down. What this is going to do is it's going to make it look like it's got some weight and inertia to it. So the way that I do this, I'm going to move the playhead out of the way. If you select that point, you'll notice, and I'm going to turn on a little magnifier, that that's a little, it's a little round dot now. This one up here, it's square. So when it's round, I've selected it, right? So it's a little dot, I've selected it. When I select it, and then hold, I, I click it once, and I hold down Option, and I drag it to the left, you're going to see a Bezier handle come out. So you might be familiar with this if you've used the pen tool in Adobe Animate or created shapes and modified those shapes. You might be able to be, you might be seeing that you can do that. You can pull out Bezier handles. It's kind of the same kind of concept. I'm tweaking the angle of this animation curve based on that, on that handle. So I'm going to click it again. I just click once and let it go and then hold down Option and click and drag. I have to do those two steps to kind of make sure I pull it out. If I don't do that, if I try to hold down Option and click and drag, it's not going to drag out the handle, right? But if I just click it again without holding Option, it got rid of it. So I'm going to hold down Option and drag it again. Hold down Option, drag it again, right? I always drag to the left first because if you drag to the right first, undo. I select it once, hold down option. If I try to drag to the right, it just wants to constrain it up and down. It's just the way it works. So it's easier to just select it, hold down option or, or alt if you're on a PC and drag out a handle. And then I'm going to do again the same thing for this side. And I'm going to try to make sure that these handles are equal on either side. A couple things about this. Once they're 180 degrees from one another, they're going to snap. So if this one is exactly opposite of this one, they're going to snap together and they're going to move like this. I can break that by holding down Option and clicking and dragging on this handle, and I can get a different curve coming in. Now, technically, I want this to be straight because I want it to slow in and then slow out. That's kind of really the concept of slow in and slow out. There are times when we're doing animation that I want to do something different, but in this case, this is how I want this to go because I want the, the pendulum to slow when it gets to the top and then slowly come back down. You're going to see it already has some weight to it. The same thing here. That's what it's doing here. So I'm going to look at all these handles and make sure they're about the same. And again, I'm going to do it to this one. Hold down Option, click it first, hold down Option, drag out a handle. Select it first, uh, let go, hold down Option, drag it out. I know it's a little bit kind of an extra step, but this is the way it works. So I click, again, click, hold down Option, drag out a handle. Click the point, hold down Option, drag out a handle. Click the point, hold down Option, drag out a handle. Same thing each time. So make sure you click it first, then hold down Option, drag out a handle. And I'm going to do the same thing to the last one because this and this are mimicked. They're on the other side. It's almost like right, this separation right here is right here. So this starts this path and this is this path, 
right? So I've got to mimic that on either side. And I, again, make sure that I've got that handle kind of equidistant on, on both sides of that dot. So this one is not so equidistant. So I'm going to pull that out a little bit, right? It doesn't have to be exact, but pretty, pretty close. Here you're going to see this looks like a nice, what they call a sine wave back and forth. And now when I play it and it loops, you're going to see I've got some weight going to it, right? It gets up to the top. Now, if I want to exaggerate that a little bit, let's take this one. And if I drag these further out, if I drag these handles, these Bezier handles out further, you're going to notice much more deep there in terms of, it looks more like a deep U, and these aren't so much, but watch what happens. See how it gets super speedy right in here and right in here? So this speeds up right in here, and then it super slows down. So you have to kind of balance that out. So to me, that doesn't look right because it's slowing down way too much. So I'm going to take those handles and I'm going to pull them back some, right? So it's really kind of up to you as an animator to figure out how far you want that to go. Do I want it to be a really quick thing? Do I want it to be kind of a lighter object? Then I'm going to pull these things in a little bit. You know, is the pendulum a pretty light pendulum or is it a very heavy pendulum? Right, so the, the closer these are, and these more, more of these more look like a, a V or an A than a U, it's going to be faster and it's going to look like it has less weight to it. See that? Right, so if I wanted to give, look like it's got a little bit of weight to it, I'm going to pull these handles out. That's how this kind of works. Right? I'm going to pull this out a little bit more, pull this out a little bit more. Right, there. So now I've got it looping and it should look. Yeah, not so much like a metronome anymore. It's got a little weight to it. It slows down and does give it a, a nice look to it, right? So shows that I've got some weight and it feels like a physical item that's actually swinging left to right. So the next stage of this, so I've got it going back and forth once, twice, and three times, and then it loops back to the beginning, right? So it's th going three times back and forth. So what I'm going to do is I want it to make it look like it's losing energy now. I want this, this thing to not go the same height every time. I want this pendulum to keep losing energy on every swing. So if we start at 60 and this goes to 60, it's not losing any energy. So that's kind of the idea is if, you, if we start up over here, it's like I, I release that pendulum and let it go. And eventually it's going to lose energy and slow down, right? So the best way to do that, or the easiest way I find, is to just pull these points up. Now, you can hold down shift if you want to constrain them, right? And I can just pull them down by a couple. You'll notice that there's little grid lines here. I could just pull it up and then down. So this is the height on the right. This is the height on the left. So I want to pull them down to zero equally, or not equally, but losing energy every time. So I'm going to pull this one up. Actually, I'm going to undo and I'm going to hold down shift so it constrains a little bit. And this one's going to be less than this one. And then this one needs to be less than this one. So this point needs to be a little bit lower. Right? And then this one needs to be even less. And then this one needs to be even less. Right? Until it really kind of slows down. Right? Let me play that. Right? And you'll see it kind of slows down there. Yep, and almost to the stop. So the other thing, I have these keyframes going at very equal timings, right? What would really happen, it's not going to be by much, but it's going to lose speed on every swing. So what I want to do is I want to add a frame to each one. So I could actually go up here into the tween span, and I'm going to add one frame to that one. And since I added one frame to this one, it would move this one over. So I'm going to move this one by two frames. I'm going to go to this one and move this one by three frames. I'm going to go to this one and move it by one, two, three, four frames. I'm going to go to this one and move it by five. One, two, three, four, five. Right? And then this one, I can actually just drag this one over. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. And then insert a frame. And I'm going to move that one over, right? It's not super critical that you do this, but it's going to look better when you do, right? And I'm not going to do looping because 
now that it's losing energy, it's not going to, I mean, if it loops, it's going to go back and jump to here. It's not going to completely loop because it's going to end at zero, right? So I'm going to turn that off and we're going to look at it. So the swing back and then it slowly loses energy, right? And so that's the idea is it's not just going slower each time and not going as high, but it's also losing a little timing. You'll notice it's going a little bit slower each time. And all I did is I moved those frames. Basically, each frame, each one moves over by one. But since I moved this one by one, this one would need to move over by two because then I've reduced the difference between this point and that point by one. So each one, this one's going to have to be moved over by one, this one by two, this one by three, this one by four, this one by five. And that's just changing the timing. I've already changed the value, and now I change the timing, right? So I'm going to play this once more. Right? Swinging, losing speed, and also having slow in and slow out. Now it looks like more of like a physical pendulum swinging back and forth, losing momentum as it goes along. And that's the uh, steps to finishing up this animated pendulum, putting some slow in and slow out, and getting it to lose momentum at the end.